Hey mamas, welcome back to the Birthing Bestie blog where we talk about real topics pertaining to pregnancy, birth, motherhood, and just real life. Here on the blog, we don't shy away from talking about the hardships of motherhood. Instead, we validate you, we encourage you, and we embrace you with open arms. Welcome back to another Partner Perspectives with Matt, my partner, who's going to talk about postpartum dad hacks. Okay. So today we're talking about postpartum dad hacks, and Matt is going to let you dads know about a handful of hacks that he, I guess, found helpful. Do you guess? I guess. I mean, we don't, I don't know his answer, so. Sometimes I don't either, <laughs> but I do have a couple things that I could, would consider uh, a hack. So hack number one. Hack number one, field visitors that are coming to see your baby. Yes. Coordinate times, coordinate days, whatever that looks like for you and your significant other or baby mama take point and figure that out and coordinate that with everybody. Huge help. Yeah. Be the one to say no, if that's the, the answer for the day too. Correct. Doesn't always have to be yes. In our specific situation, there were days where we just didn't feel like having people over and being the one that coordinates and lets them know is, was a big help. Yeah. Got another one? Yes. How else? Do things around the house, dishes, uh, laundry, cleaning, things like that. It's a huge help to both of you. You're both going to be tired, but if you're breastfeeding, you can't feed, obviously. And so that's something that your significant other is going to be up at all hours doing with your new child. Mm -hmm. So doing all the other things so that they can rest. Rest will be precious. Take advantage of the time you have to rest. And at least in our situation, it always feels better to rest when things are done. Yeah. Yeah. Another? I have, I have another hack with that. Okay. Also, if you're too tired to do them rest. Yeah. So you can, you can put it off. Uh, by no means am I saying you have to have the cleanest house with a newborn because we did not, but <clears throat> um, when it needs to be done, just take the initiative and do it mm -hmm. and your significant other will enjoy the rest because yeah. there will be times where they can't rest and you can. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. And kind of piggy backing off of the first one with visitors. Ha if you want to rest too, have your visitors help have a chore list up on the fridge or in part of that um, communication that the partner's doing fielding visitors Give them a task to do. And that won't make sense for every visitor, but for the majority of people who are coming to visit you and your family and your new baby, they're going to be people who you are close enough with and should feel comfortable enough with setting boundaries, number one, and also asking them to help out, whether that's do the dishes, wash the bottles, or the laundry, the tidying up, those kinds of things. And that can be, you know, that can go hand in hand with part and then pack number one and two. Field the visitors and have them clean. Even better. Yeah. You're hacking my hacks. <laughs> okay, one more to wrap us up. We had a meal train where people um, either got us Grubhub or DoorDash gift cards or brought us food. Mm -hmm. That was a massive help not having to worry about meals um, or what you're going to cook mm -hmm. or what you're feeling. And I, we also were able to take advantage of grocery delivery, which not leaving the house, I, I mean, it was over two years ago, but I still remember not wanting to do anything other than rest when I could rest. And the last thing I'd want to do is go grocery shopping. So that was a huge benefit to have something to deli groceries delivered to our front door. But more so than that, I mean, the meal train was great. Yeah. And to hack your hack one more time with the meal train. There's probably the most known website is just mealtrain.com. And like Matt said, you can do Grubhub. You can send Grubhub or DoorDash gift certificates. But as the people who are receiving the food from the meal train, you can go in and specify certain days that you don't want food. Because what I remember in the early days and having the meal train while it was so beneficial 
and this is not a complaint, but there were a couple days where we had back-to-back deliveries and it was almost too much food that we didn't have enough storage in the fridge or we were just a little overstocked in food. Again, not a complaint, but you can space those days out. So if you are feeling like you have too much food, then you can skip a day and block off a day so no one can deliver that day. And one more hack to hack your hack. If you have a meal train, you should absolutely accept all the food that's coming your way, but it doesn't mean that you should have to field visitors. So if it's one of those days where you don't want visitors, but you have someone who wants to bring you food, put a cooler on your porch and have a note on top of the cooler. You can download a template at ebbirthing.com forward slash resources for mama. It's a cooler template that just says, thanks for dropping off food. Let us know that you left something. We're not having visitors at this time. And that way you don't have to entertain people just because they're bringing you food. Well, mama, that's a wrap on this partner perspective on postpartum dad hacks. Send this to your partner. And if you have any hacks that you want to add or things that we left off, share them with us. We want to know what made your life easier in the postpartum phase so we can pass them on to other mamas who are joining the new life of parenthood. So always feel free to slide into my DMs at ebbirthing on Instagram or email me at ebbirthing at gmail.com. And if you need any other support in your journey, I'm just a click away. Okay, until next time.